Raising three girls participating in the annual Montessori car races has created quite a collection of retired pilots. For a racing family, a school project to build a race car has the potential to really get the competitive juices flowing. For our school um, race car race that we do every year, we, we are going to build a race car. We could be in the gravity class or the open class. I was thinking it would be fun to be in the open class where we do power well, a few nights ago, Ryan came home from school with one of my favorite assignments of the year, the Montessori race car race. It's always been modeled sometime around the Indy 500, and there was a little bit of a different twist to it this year. As we read through the instructions, we found out there was a new unlimited class where the cars could be powered. I had a hunch that this was gonna be a lot more work, but Ryan was pretty determined to go down that path. Steel, we went in the past with a Kind of heavy design that was already yeah. for the gravity car. Because if it's more heavy and it's not powered, then it'll go faster, right? And if it's lighter and it is powered, then it will go faster. Right? That's pretty much my theory. So we went to trusty old YouTube. You can figure out how to do almost anything on there. This guy, Yuri Oster, look how many followers he has. Wow. We found some pretty intricate things and they looked pretty simple, so. That then sent us directly to the hardware store. We did some shopping, and it seemed like our idea was going to pan out pretty easily. What did they work to wind them up in that? Maybe. So let's keep a let's keep those in our in our head for what we maybe need. Daddy, daddy, daddy. This is the thing that they had in the video. Oh That's yeah. That's what they had. Little gear set. Then it was time to build the car. We did some measuring, some cutting of some wood. Sometimes we didn't have the right tools, but we made do. The next thing that we did was mounting of the axles. The tool we were using didn't cut the axle very well, and it crimped the ends shut so that it wouldn't spin. So we had to switch to a set of wire cutters that ultimately got the job done. Then we mounted the rear axle. And then we scratched our heads some, because the thing that seems so easy on the YouTube channel about making all the gears measure right and fit together and roll and actually spin the rear tires didn't really add up that easy. So we fiddled with that a while and ultimately decided that we could cut out a U-shape in the back of the car where the gears would slot in and attach to the axle. We then moved to cutting the front piece of the car where we would mount the rubber band and a second piece that looked very similar that would hold the drive line. We had to drill a hole in it, and then Ryan helped me glue it down. Ooh, 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 ooh. Idea, idea. What? Man, it could go that way. That'll give us more space. I like that idea, right? Good idea. <laughs> At this time, we decided that it was time to take a break and probably would be fun to paint the car. Ryan picked out some really cool pearly purple paint. As we started to piece things together again, we realized that the rear axle holder wouldn't let the axle spin very well. So it was back to the hardware store. And lo and behold, we found a really cool carbon fiber one. So we figured this is a race car, lightweight, strong, and with very little friction, the carbon fiber was exactly what we needed. We mounted our super cool wheels with the big sticky rear tires. We ultimately ended up completely abandoning the gear idea. It just wasn't gonna work. At one point, I had one gear melted in half by the hot glue gun and another one stuck to my finger. We decided that was a good time to abandon the gear idea and figured that we could just mount the rubber band directly to the rear axle. Bingo! And ultimately, we got to this. Here's the purple car, all mounted up and looking pretty good. 
Then it was time to test, which once again left Ryan and I both scratching our heads because it didn't look or go at all like in the YouTube video, even with our awesome sticky rear tires. Because when we watched that guy, it seemed like the car had all kinds of power, but it was just doing a burnout. This is difficult. Uh. We thought we had cracked the code. So... We switched back to the old gravity-powered car. We knew it was a little outside of the rule box. It worked around just a little bit. We did some renaming of the car, changed a few pieces, and decided to enter it in the race. As Polar power. And she's now going to decorate it with the new polar power polar bear driver livery. We were tired. Poor Luke Skywalker. One thing we figured out in 20 years of racing is that sometimes things don't go as planned. We've had lots of years of success at this race. We've won it a few times and pretty much always at least been on the podium. This year, we got a really hard draw and lost in the first round. Ryan was a good sport about the finish. Derek doesn't do anything halfway, but maybe next year we'll try something a little easier, like a potato car or a hairbrush. Thank you for following Fast Life TV. Please consider subscribing by clicking on our logo on the right-hand side of the screen. We love your likes and shares. Pay attention, this is the driver meeting. We'll be good. We're good. They're going to do two out of three to determine.